let's explore a fascinating and strange story about mysterious bloodstains appearing in the bathroom. Let's find out if this woman's husband is hiding a dark secret or not. Don't forget to subscribe to the AB Top channel so you don't miss out on interesting stories like this. Let's start with a story from the True Off My Chest subreddit today. It reads, I fell in love with my married neighbor and then I babysat his kids. Now I'm questioning my feelings. Gorgeous and Acorn wrote it. First of all, I apologize for any mistakes or other issues, I'm new to Reddit. I realized that I couldn't discuss this with my mother or any of my friends, but I felt that this would be a wonderful topic to discuss after seeing a Reddit post on TikTok. In addition, I'm going to publish this in a few more locations depending on the results I got when I searched for the best Reddits to post on for suggestions. I apologize if this appears more than once. Finally, please attempt to comprehend my point of view even though I know you will all judge me. Regards. I'm a 34-year-old woman who had a terrible breakup with my long-term boyfriend seven months ago. I then moved into a house that we are all renting with my best friend and her husband. I got to know my neighbor, Kay, at that point. I fell in love with him the moment he helped us carry our belongings into the house. Since we both live in a big city's outskirts, we wind up commuting by train to work every day at the same time. At an early age, I knew Kay was married with children. He frequently discussed them, and images of them may be found on social media, his lock screen, and other places. But it began as a pretty innocent, foolish crush at first. He's charming, humorous, and attractive. He asked me about my work on our first train ride together, and he seemed really interested in what I had to say, something my ex never did and something we frequently argued over. His oldest daughter needed a pep talk before a school presentation, so he spent the entire drive to work talking to her on the phone. He is constantly going above and above for his children. Because Kay is like way with everyone else, it was simply so easy to picture how nice and attentive he would be with me. We converse on the train, which is a 20-minute commute practically every weekday, and although Kay has never indicated that he has feelings for me, we are now true friends. I've never had any issue attracting men's attention, and with our current foundation, I feel we have the potential to grow into something greater. Shortly after I started feeling something for him, I discovered that I went to school with his wife, which shocked me as they are complete opposites. She's dry, he's humorous. She is cautious, he is exciting. She is quite intelligent, he is a little dim. This seems cruel on the surface, but wow. Their personalities just don't seem to mesh well at all, and because Kay is so kind, I can totally see him becoming enmeshed in a relationship. The problem is that Kay came to my door late last night to ask if I might briefly watch his children. Naturally, this was not a problem, and I immediately answered yes. He informed me that while on a business trip, his wife had been involved in a vehicle accident. Due to her pregnancy, he was quite concerned and had scheduled the following flight to visit her. He requested me to watch kids for a few hours while a family friend drove many hours to watch them at night because they don't currently have any family in that state. The problem that surfaced was that these children were a complete nightmare. The oldest of the three girls was a typical bratty preen multiplied by 1,000. She argued with me about everything from dinner to who should clean up to what movie she may watch. She was impolite and showed absolutely no respect for my authority. I even heard her refer to me as a, insert word, a few times behind her back. Even after I told her no, the middle insisted on playing loud, joyous games all the time. The youngest contributed to whatever drama the middle wanted to generate, but she was mostly calm and kind on her own. My agreement to play hide and seek with the younger two was the result, and I ended up locking myself out of the house. I went back and tried to get the oldest to let me in through the rear screen door, but she put on her headphones and pretended not to hear me. I went home after the family friend, who thankfully showed up a little while later and allowed me in. This saddens me since, up until this point, Kay would talk about his kids so much that I would frequently dreamed about being a stepmother to them. I no longer want anything to do with them, but on the other hand, there is more evidence that Kay and his wife are unhappy as happy families do not raise their children in this manner. 
I would not get along with his kids, so I'm not sure if I could ever have a relationship with Kay, but that's all I want. And that's even before they might get divorced, in which case their mother could easily incite them against me. I know that if I follow this, Kay and I might have a wonderful relationship, but this has really rattled me. I genuinely adore Kay. All I want is someone to talk to about this, but I know that people would be critical of me. I swear, that made me feel really uneasy. Her desire of becoming the stepmother already gave off the impression that she virtually thought of herself as a member of the family. Wow, such a blessing. But the first person to comment says, yikes. First off, children from happy homes can and often do behave that way. They're kids, and they're questioning your authority. That happens. Also, lusting over a married man shows how screwy you are. Hope he sees this and stops being friends with you. You are wanting a marriage to wreck because you fell for a married man. Dude, there are plenty of single men. Go after one of them. Don't wish to be a homewrecker. Bookneat says, with all the kindness in my heart, please go to therapy. This sounds like it could indicate a serious mental health concern. You deserve to be mentally healthy, and if this post is any indication, you are not currently. Another comment from the autistic guy reads, based on your original post, which is now going viral, I urge you to watch the YouTube channel for Dr. Romani. He then shares a link to a video that Med Circle made with her that provides a great overview of her area of expertise. Finally, he shares another link and says, it is notoriously difficult to treat because those with the condition are defined quite literally as a person who has an unreasonably high sense of their own importance, yet need and seek out too much attention and want people to admire them. Furthermore, those who suffer from this illness might not be able to comprehend or give a damn about other people's sentiments. It sounds a lot like you. I implore you to get assistance if you truly consider it and concur, as you can repeatedly find yourself in this same predicament. You ask, what's the condition? Dysfunction of the narcissistic personality. It's got a terrible reputation, and people who own it choose to ignore it because of that as well as the fact that, nope, it's you and not me. When reading this, if that's the first thing that comes to mind, you undoubtedly have it, and you should definitely ask about it. After that, we'll talk about the quick update. The commenter stated, to be honest, it doesn't sound like you love him to which the original poster responded. You imagine this fantastical life for him and romanticize him. You give the impression that he would desert his wife and flee with you. You use the argument that since his kids are wild, the household must be unhappy to support this belief. You, on the other hand, totally disregard the reality that he left everything to attend to his pregnant wife. You claim the children don't regard you as an authority. They seem to have barely gotten to know you, and now you're in command. You are not, and never will be, their mother. Do you believe that if you pursue Kay, you two would have a wonderful relationship? You wouldn't, of course. It's obvious that he loves his family. He doesn't necessarily want you just because he is kind to you. It's not healthy, so I advise you to talk to a specialist about the situation. In response, Hope said, how can you tell if I love him or not? Do you reside inside my mind? Before entering into a relationship with someone, you can still love them. And just as I'm not positive if he loves me, neither are you certain that he doesn't. Until you cross that bridge, you can never know. I'm aware that he wouldn't simply abandon everything and flee with me. There would be a divorce court, custody agreements, etc. for months or even years. Before the criticism starts, let me say that, even if he did decide to divorce his wife, there's no assurance that he would. Kay, though, is a decent, honest man. It wouldn't be fair to any of us if something were to happen between us, so he would definitely leave his wife. He also told me that he has a strong belief in justice. For that reason, may I ask? I am aware that if something were to happen, this might get messy. I just want to know whether things will get worse because of his kid's behavior. If it does occur, I'd like to know if the possible benefits exceed the possible drawbacks. So, the husband, Kay, texted the wife, saying, Wife and the girls are okay, and the original poster, OP, shared a screenshot of the text exchange as an update. 
Thank you for keeping an eye on the girls, Opie said. Any time is fine. After a while, he posts a link to the post about I fell in love with a neighbor, which we just read, and asks, Is this you? Let me know if there's anything else I can do. The wife responds with a thumbs up emoji. Since we must speak if that is the case. I swear to you, I would never consider leaving my family behind for you. I apologize if I ever misinterpreted you, but you are simply a neighbor to me. I believe that our friendship is over. I hope you replied, wait, may I give you a call? And that was the end of that. Absolutely, that is the right thing for the husband to be doing. But can you imagine being someone and coming across a post like this and knowing that it's about you? That would be absolutely terrifying. And this is a neighbor as well, so they're not automatically going to go away. And it gave me real creepy vibes about someone like that living next door to you. And obviously, there were a lot of comments as well, concerned about the behavior of the OP of the story. Let's face it, it's not normal behavior. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's move on to another story. This is from the RBI subreddit, which is titled Reddit Bureau of Investigation, basically using the internet to solve real-world problems. It's from Doing OK, who says, Mysterious reoccurring blood splatter in our bathrooms. Is my spouse deceiving me? So obviously, as we get into the story, we're going to be talking about some blood. So if you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are always down in the description and along the timeline below. Thank you. Buckle up. This one is a weird one. Since me, 24 female, and my husband, 26 male, have moved into our apartment eight months ago, I've been finding random blood splattering on the walls, cabinets, and floors around our toilets, and once even on our bathroom mirror. They're usually tiny droplets, but sometimes they get smeared on the walls or floor. I assume they're fresh or wet. I know that the first suspect would be menstrual blood. However, I have not had a period in two years thanks to my birth control. I first noticed about three or four months ago. I asked my husband about it. In the first few times, he would tell me that he has no clue where it came from or how it got there. But after I would clean it up and new ones would appear, I would ask him again. Eventually, he told me that sometimes when he blows his nose, his nose bleeds, and it could be from that. I partially accepted that answer. However, I can't recall a single time where I've blown my nose and missed the tissue so much that my snot sprayed all around me. I also mentioned to him that your nose is not supposed to bleed when you blow it, and maybe he should see an ENT to see what's up. But he refuses and says it's fine. So the cycle continues. I clean up blood droplets, and they reappear around our toilets in a matter of days. When I mention them, he gets frustrated and short with me and doesn't want to talk about it. He has doubled down on the it's from blowing my nose thing. But I still can't imagine how one, he blows his nose so terribly that it sprays snotty blood in every direction, and two, his nose bleeds every day, and he's not concerned about it. I recently asked him if his nose has always done that. I previously dated someone with a thin nose lining, and they once got a massive nose bleed from me doing the got your nose thing. So I know it's possible. But he said no, he doesn't think it's been like that always, and then pressured me to stop the conversation. Also, I would never find blood in our previous house's bathrooms, and we lived there for four years. I'll add that we have a regular sex life, and I've seen basically every inch of him and there's no sign of any cuts or trauma anywhere. I'm sick of cleaning up blood, and I'm also repulsed by the idea that he doesn't know how to blow his nose without spraying bloody mucus everywhere. I'm also very concerned for him. If he really has new nose bleeds every day, as a friend from high school had this happen and ignored it, and it ended up being cancer in the sinus cavities. So here I am asking Reddit, what the heck is going on? Is he lying to me? Is it really his nose? If so, why is he suddenly bleeding every day? Why is he so defensive about it? What is going on? Edit to answer some frequently asked questions. Yes, we have pets, but the blood shows up only in bathrooms, 
including the guest and suite where the pets are not allowed ever. Those rooms are closed off. No blood anywhere where the pets are allowed. I'm in control of finances, and there is no money missing ever. Both our direct deposits go into our joint account. He has a credit card, but the only checking account he has is our joint one. He does have hemor, but so do I, thanks, Crohn's disease. And I've never gotten blood anywhere but the toilet. He gets medical anxiety, and this could be why he's defensive because he should probably see a doctor. He told me that when he goes to the bathroom at night, he doesn't turn any lights on so that he doesn't wake me. I'm a light sleeper, and when he blows his nose, he doesn't see the blood since it's dark. He does have pretty bad allergies. He's had no behavioral changes since this started. Also adding a comment I made for those suggesting drugs. Not because I'm rejecting you, because I'm getting shamed for not taking the comment that suggested it was drugs, but because I need more time to process the possibility. Moreover, I can't just randomly accuse my husband of using drugs without any concrete proof, as that would severely damage our relationship. I would be furious if he accused me of using drugs without any proof. Therefore, if he was hiding drugs in our small apartment, where should I look? I looked inside the toilets and disassembled every drawer, our ceilings are too high for either of us to reach, if you have lived with someone who is addicted, please direct me to additional sources of evidence. Now, I understand that there are many different viewpoints on this, which is the purpose of that subreddit, and I can understand people turning to drugs. I won't discuss it on YouTube, of course, but every now and then I can remember someone coming out of the toilet with a bleeding nose, clearly using drugs, and as they approached the door, touched their nose, realized what was happening, and fled back inside. But I also believe that I can understand. A better commenter says, you all have a dog that wags their tail a lot. But I'd be more concerned from a health standpoint in this one as well. Like you said, you knew someone who went through similar, and having nosebleeds regularly like that is going to be a concern, of course. So you'd want them to see a doctor or someone to at least get this diagnosed ASAP. And that the husband is totally dismissing it, almost trying to hide it in some ways, is concerning, and you'd want to find out why there's a good likelihood they have a bleeding wound from their happy tail hitting throughout the room. It may be any other animal, the user comments. So, yes, we do have pets, a dog among them. Pets are not permitted in the guest area, yet I discovered blood in both our master bedroom and the guest bathroom en suite. Snailhead J replies, we keep them all turned off. How often does this happen? I would like to watch how he exhales. I rage clean the blood at least once a week, so it all surfaces within a week. That way, you know A, if it's indeed from his nose, and B, if it is his nose, then you'll know how he's getting it everywhere. The other person responds, the anti-detective remarks, also, in the six years that we've been dating, I've never seen him blow his nose, aside from the one occasion when he had a sinus infection, and that wasn't bloody or spilt around. Could he be cheating on you? I don't mean to sound morbid, but period sex can actually result in blood spatter. The person responding says, oof, but is he only having affairs with girls who are menstruating? Because they reappear practically every week. Also, I don't think he is cheating. Another thing that jumped out to me, and I know it's not really the point of the story, but it still crossed my mind as I was reading it, is that you seem to be cleaning up this blood, and the only person to be doing so and it's happened quite frequently. He seems to know he's doing it, but you're still the only person. Cleaning up. That's pretty grim, in my opinion, and I think it would pee me off quickly if I was going into the bathroom and having to clean up blood every so often, especially when the person knows about it as well. Of course, there is the concern about the health issue, of course. I'm not downplaying that whatsoever. For someone to spray blood everywhere and then just walk out and think, ah, that is just. Although the OP updates the post and states, an update some, probably very few, have been waiting for, it's pretty disrespectful to me. The mystery of the bloodied bathroom has been solved. I will not be using this account after it is posted since I know that some users will unavoidably genuinely think that my spouse is covertly hiding a drug problem despite this update and will harass me over it.
About 10 direct messages were sent to Professor S offering to share images of their own or loved one's blood evidence of snorting or shooting up, and I was relieved that not a single one of them resembled what I was discovering. My opinion that it wasn't drugs was reinforced by those pictures, the fact that there were no gaps in our finances, no history of strange personality changes, and the fact that I thoroughly cleaned and inspected our 800-square-foot flat and turned up nothing odd. I'm happy to report that my spouse is incredibly repulsive. I want to thank everyone who brought me pictures and personal stories about their own or their loved one's drug use before moving on. I also wish you all the happiness and health you deserve. Obviously, a few months have passed since my post. During that time, I've received a lot of hate mail in my direct messages from people who call me stupid and who even suggest that I file for divorce from my husband because there's a chance that he uses hard drugs. To start, even if my husband did have a drug problem, I wouldn't leave him, I would love him and want to help him, because addiction is an illness that requires support. But finally, I was looking in the dark corners of cabinets and furniture cracks, the hidden places where drugs hide, and I found nothing. I sat him down for another talk about the blood, and he assured me that he was having nosebleeds at night, and he promised to turn on the lights from then on to make sure he cleaned it up, because I did not deserve to have to bear the burden of doing it for him. He kept his word, and I noticed that after that conversation, he was turning on the light whenever he went to blow his nose at night, and the blood started to appear. Two weeks ago, while scrolling through Instagram, I came across a reel titled Signs You're Using Your Nasal Spray Wrong. The first sign was sudden, severe nosebleeds. My husband's allergies had gotten worse since we moved to a new part of the state, so he started taking Flonase to control them. I knew that the blood appeared about a week and a half after he started taking the nasal spray because he has been using my prescription ever since Flonase came out with a pill version that I prefer. He took a week off Flonase to reset his sinuses, and last week he started using it again the correct way, and holy cow, he stopped snoring, his voice sounds different, his nose stopped whistling, and thank God, he stopped having midnight nosebleeds. No more blood, but also no more paranoia on my part, and he can finally breathe out of his nose properly for the first time since we moved here. I showed him the video I saw as soon as I got home and it also showed how to use nasal sprays properly, you have to tilt them, not shoot them straight up. If you're asking why he didn't consult a doctor right away, it's because of our financial situation and his concern related to his health. Alright, problem fixed. Many people discussed how he didn't initially clean up the blood, how he might be hiding the drugs, etc. Others discussed how people were drawing conclusions from the Reddit comments on the original post, such as how someone said, divorce your husband, go no contact with all your friends, call CPS on every single one of your neighbors, to which another person responded, start a you binder on your mother-in-law. But now, I'm going to give this one over to you guys. Tell us, in the comments section below, what you honestly believe the problem could be. I would like to express my sincere gratitude for your participation in today's stories. Your love, support, and time are invaluable to me. Thank you so much for your involvement, you are truly amazing. I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love. You were everything I needed, but then there came a time when you crushed my dreams. Oh, yeah, you played me like a fool and made me think that the line separating love wasn't thick enough to read. Oh, yeah, you see, we in the spare crime everywhere you're selling false hope cause you just don't care. You just don't care. No, you're just not caring. Thank you for taking the time to follow our story. We eagerly await your feedback and new ideas, so please share and suggest different endings. We are excited to improve and bring even more captivating stories to you. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for the latest updates. Wishing you a fantastic day.